Chapter Six, Giant Pyre. The ground beneath Olven trembled more violently as the giant came closer. He remained steadfast at the mouth of the desert, marveling that he could calmly contemplate how calm he was being. His sword hung loosely in his hand. He still hoped he could use diplomatic means to convince Giant Pyre into behaving. Finally, he got his first glimpse of the fearsome creature that had plagued Narnia and Arkenland. The giant was twelve feet tall, and to Olven's surprise, did indeed have two heads. The head on the left had a gruesome mouth with crooked, gapped teeth, yellowed from neglect. A bushy unibrow sat atop his mismatched eyes. The face was pockmarked and had a long white scar from his ear to his mouth. The right head was far better to look at. Its bushy eyebrows were not as thick and gnarled. The teeth were straight and pearly white, and the face smooth of marks. A pleasant smile graced the full lips. The heads took in him, his sister, and the horses. The left head licked his lips. His green and brown eyes gleamed. Ah, I see lunch is waiting for us. Now, no, chided the other head with some amusement. We must be nice to our unexpected guests. Come closer, girl, and bring the horses so that you might partake in a meal with us. Stay where you are, Olven told Lana sternly. The left head frowned as she made no move to join them. He swiveled his head back to Olven. Come, come, said the right head. We do not need any unpleasantness. Sit down and make yourselves comfortable. Olven ignored the invitation. Are you the same giant pyre who has been making a nuisance of himself these past weeks in Narnia and Arkenland? Yes, said the left head, grinning. I don't know that we are making a nuisance of ourselves, said the other in a mildly amusing tone. We are traveling. Why are you so far from your home? Northern giants do not usually come this far south. Both heads scowled. We were driven from our home because we were too odd for them. So now we are vagabonds and travel where the wind takes us. Olven glanced at his sister again. So, the tales she had heard were true. Good sirs, the people of Arkenland and Narnia are willing to welcome thee with open arms if thou agree to behave. I beseech thee to turn away from thy present course and let us sit down to speak as gentlemen on the terms for thou becoming a citizen of the free north. I trust that the rules I shall tell thee will be generous, and thou will agree to them as they are more than fair. The young one has a silver tongue, approved the right head. That should serve him well in the days to come, providing he lives past today. Can I eat him now? The left head looked at Olven hungrily. Hush, let us hear what the lad has to say. What are these rules you speak of? Well, began Olven awkwardly. The first rule would be that you could not eat anyone. That includes the talking animals that inhabit Narnia. You call that fair? Grumbled the left head, only to be shushed again. Go on. All this time, Olven had been unable to look the left head in the eyes. So, as he spoke, he looked only at the right head. As he discussed the first rule, he found the giant's eyes mesmerizing. He couldn't decide what color his eyes were, as they seemed to change constantly. Also, his head was starting to get fuzzy, and he couldn't think straight. To his horror and embarrassment, he couldn't remember what he had been talking about. He shook his head, trying to clear it. I, I apologize. Uh, what were we talking about? You were saying you would love to stay and have a meal with us. The right head's voice was soothing. Olven remembered that that was indeed what they had been talking about. How could he have forgotten? He did not want to offend this gentle giant. Yes, of course, he answered, dazed. I would be honored to join you. 
The left head cackled with glee. Oven! shouted a faint voice. It was drowned out by the pleasant buzzing in his head. It felt like the time he had consumed too much wine during a feast. Oven! Who was calling him? He wanted to look around, but the giant's eyes had trapped his own. He found himself unable to look away. Oven, don't look into their eyes. The giant is bewitching you. A flicker of annoyance entered the giant's eyes, halting the fast-changing color. It was enough to break the hold it had on the prince, and he jerked his head away. Giant pie roared in frustration. Olven blinked a few times and took in Lana's worried face. She gripped the reins tightly and looked to be having a hard time not running up to him. He turned his attention back to the giant. That is another thing you would not be allowed to do if you agree to live peaceably with us. Let's get this over with, snarled the left head. I'm hungry. I agree. The time for talk has passed. The giant advanced. Both heads grinned wickedly. Olven started to feel nervous for the first time. Either the water had worn off, or the fear was a part of their hypnotism left over. Nevertheless, Olven held on to his sword and strode forward to meet Giant Pyre. He swallowed a little, hoping to soothe his dry throat as he lifted his sword above his head and shouted, For Aslan, and for Arkenland! A club appeared in the giant's hand. It had previously been strapped behind his back. The giant swung the club at Olven, barely missing his head. Olven managed to roll out of the way, closer to the giant's feet. He reached as high as he could and stabbed the giant above the ankle. Giant Pyre roared in pain and backhanded him. Olven went flying and landed several feet away, the blow effectively burying him in the sand. A dull pain shot up his spine, and it took a few precious seconds to dig himself out of the sand again. By this time, the giant had composed himself and was stalking towards him. He slowly got to his feet and stumbled back to the giant. I would rather have settled this in a diplomatic way. I have not much use for swords, but I will slay you if I have to. Olven hoped that Giant Pyre would listen to his words, but the creature was beyond reasoning. With a loud yell, he swung the club again. Olven scurried to sidestep it, and not a moment too soon, as he heard the whistle of wind by his ear. He ran forward and stabbed the giant in the foot, then tumbled away before Pyre could crush him. The giant roared in rage and pain. Four eyes stared at Olven with a mixture of malice and hate. You will die! The giant hissed and brought the club up to smash his head in. Desperate to end the battle quickly, the prince threw the sword at him with all his might. The sword lodged into the cheekbone of the left head. He screamed and pulled the sword out, flinging it away. The sudden movement of the left head caused the right head to be jerked away, and Pyre fell forward on his knees. Before the giant could recover enough to swing the club at him, Olven took out the dragon tooth from his tunic and drove it into Giant Pyre's thigh. The giant yelled and swore loudly. He swatted the young man away again. Olven scrambled to his feet as the giant stood up, grinning, as he observed that the prince had no more weapons. The prince's heart pounded as he came to this realization, too. His eyes scanned for the sword and found it half a mile away, sticking up in the sand. This is the end, he thought. The centaur was wrong. He jumped out of the way as the club smashed the ground where he used to be standing. Oven! He heard Lana yell. Lady Lilne's gift! Use that! Lana threw something at him, and it landed at his feet. He quickly bent over and picked up the reed pipe that he had quite forgotten all about. Figuring this would count as being in dire need, Olven blew a note on the pipe. The giant stumbled backwards and tried to cover his ears. What is that horrid sound? Puzzled, Olven looked at the pipe. 
It does not sound horrid to me. Again he blew into the pipe. Emboldened by the giant's hasty retreat, Ovin blew a series of notes, and Giant Pyre screamed in pain. Stop! He pleaded. We will agree to your rules. We will live peacefully with you. Only stop that dreadful noise. Ovin hesitated, wondering if he could take the giant at his word. Do you swear to uphold Arkenland and Narnian law? We swear! We swear! Very well. Olven dropped the hand holding the reed pipe to his side. I am glad that we could have absolved this without bloodshed. He turned to make sure his sister was all right, and met Lana's horrified gaze. Look out! She pointed behind him. Olven swung back to meet the giant and saw he was bringing his club down to smash him. He jumped out of the way and blew hard into the pipe. Giant Pyre yelled in agony. I dropped the club to cover his ears again. You tricked me, Olven said angrily. He blew out more notes and did not let up. Before his very eyes, the giant began to transform. The skin under the faces began to writhe and twist. Blotches of dark gray appeared. The giant stumbled back once more until he was directly on the pass into Arkenland. His body was becoming solid. His feet were the first to turn into stone, and the rest of him quickly followed. When Giant Pyre was completely made out of stone, Olven seized the music and fell to his knees heavily. Lana abandoned the horses and ran to him. He fell back into her arms as exhaustion overtook him. Are you hurt badly? He managed to chuckle lightly. I am in more pain than the time my trainer first taught me to use a sword. Is anything broken or needing mending? Not unless you can mend my back. That is what hurts the most. Lana started pulling him to his feet, and he groaned as his back protested the move. We have to get you out of this desert. Can you ride? Maybe. Olven said wearily. He let himself be led to the horses, and she helped him up destiny. They journeyed slowly back to the winding Arrow River, and once there Lana helped him off his horse. She laid him gently on the ground and gave him the flask of water that she had given him earlier. This will help loosen the muscles in your back. He eagerly drank it. But before he could get his fill, Lana took it away from him. She gave him water from the river to continue drinking. Soon Olven could feel the pain leaving him and realized he was now ravenously hungry. His stomach growled loudly, as if concluding this observation. Lana smirked and rummaged through her saddlebags, bringing out the rest of the food they had. Olven nearly choked as he crammed the bread and cheese into his mouth. Lana just shook her head at him. You know, he mused, I don't think that centaur knew what he was talking about. Anyone could have blown the reed pipe, so I don't see why it had to be me. You're wrong, brother. Lana gave him a teasing smile. Do you not remember where you got the pipe? I doubt Lady Leon would have given it to anyone else besides you. Olven found himself blushing. Nonsense, he said, but in his heart he knew it to be true. Shall we go back to Anvard then? Lana asked, wisely choosing not to argue further with him. Nay, Olven said closing his eyes. Let's stay here a little more and rest. He listened to the birds whistling and the squirrels chattering. He could hear the river as it rushed by to lands unknown to him. Most would have been inclined to follow the river to see where it took them, but Olven was quite content to stay where he was. The sound of nature lulled him into a deep sleep. Lana watched over him as the sun lowered in the sky.